Hi, this is Stan Lyle with Master Math. During the lesson, you're going to come to some You Try It slides where you're asked to do problems that relate to the lesson. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you have a really good time today. Today we're going to be talking about fitting a line to data and then using that line to make projections and predictions. Now that may all sound very complicated, but trust me, it's not that bad. I'll give you a quick example. Let's say we wanted to find out if there was a relationship between the height of teenagers and their age. We could go out and survey a bunch of teenagers, and for each one we'd list their height and their age. And then we could graph the height and the age, and we might come up with a graph that looked a little bit like this. For instance, we had two that were 13 years old, and one was that height, and the other was that height. And maybe this, this graph would help us understand the relationship between age and height. Well, we're going to spend this lesson working on that, and before it's done, you're going to understand a scatter plot correlation, line of best fit, interpolation, and extrapolation. So far in algebra we've been talking about linear relationships and just pretty simple direct variations. And they look a lot like that. It's a straight line and you can explain that straight line completely with an equation like y equals one half x plus two. And this is a linear equation and a direct variation. What that means is that there's a precise and predictable change in y for any amount of change in x. The ratio of x to y is always the same. They're always precisely the same. Well, unfortunately, in the real world, things are seldom quite that simple. But we can still use these linear relationships to try to understand things that are a little more complicated. Now, we might graph a series of data points, an x value and a y value, and we might come up with a whole bunch of points on a graph. And what we would call that is a scatter plot. The graph with points uh, listed on them is known as a scatter plot. And what we're trying to see with this scatter plot is if there's a correlation between the x value and the y value. Do changes in x result in predictable changes in y? Well, in the case of this scatter plot, where the points are all over the place, I don't think there is a correlation between x and y. But what if we only had those points? Now it seems that there may be a correlation between x and y. As x increases, y increases. And we could potentially draw a line that runs between those points and is more or less a description of the general pattern of those points. And we could create an equation for that line, and that equation might tell us something about the relationship between x and y. Here's an example. We've got some x values and some y values. For each x value, there's a y value, and I think I see a relationship there. I think I see a pattern between my x's and y's. They're not scattered around at random. There seems to be some order to them. And I think I can see a line that might fit between those points. Something like that. A line that, has a, that runs right down the middle of the points. It should have about an equal number of points on either side of it. And that's known as a line of best fit. It describes the general pattern that these points on the graph are showing us. And in this case, it's a positive correlation. As x increases, y increases. That line has a positive slope. A positive correlation or a positive slope means that as x increases, 
y increases. This line represents a negative correlation and it has a negative slope. As x increases, y decreases. Now you try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit the forward key to move on to the answer. Well, I think I can see a pattern here. I think that these points are close enough together and predictable enough that there's a relationship. There's a correlation between X and Y. I can predict, at least in a general sense, what my Y value would be if I knew what my X value was. So I think I can say that this data demonstrates a fairly strong correlation. And it's a negative correlation because as my x increases, my y decreases. If I were to draw a line on here, it would be a negative sloped line. Let's look at an example. Let's say I wanted to find out if there was a relationship between the amount of education that somebody received and the amount of money they earned later when they got a job. The Census Bureau collects data like that and this is their their data. The Census Bureau surveyed a bunch of people and concluded that on average those with nine years of education earned sixteen thousand five hundred and thirty dollars a year. If they had ten years of formal education they earned nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty dollars and so forth. Well now I could graph this, this relationship between years of education and earnings. I could call years of education my x variable and average annual earnings my y variable. And if I graphed it, it'd look just like that. And when I look at that, I can see that pretty clearly there is a relationship between years of education and average annual earnings. As years of education increase, average annual earnings also increase. And it's a pretty tight pattern. It's a pretty predictable relationship. It's so predictable that I could draw a line that ran right down the middle of those data points. And that line would fairly accurately represent the relationship between years of education and amount of earnings. That would be a line of best fit if it's the best line that fits all those data points. If it is a line of best fit, there should be approximately the same number of data points above the line as there are below the line. And if I knew that line, I could create an equation that represented that line. Y equals MX plus B. M is my slope. And the slope of this line is 5,086. Now I figured that out by going over to this table and getting the change in my y values divided by the change in my x values and that became my slope. 5086 is my slope. And B, my y-intercept, well that's way down here at minus $28,000. So y equals 5086x minus 28,000 represents the relationship between years of education and average annual earnings. Hey, listen up. This is interesting. I could put dollar signs on this and it would read y equals $5,086 times x minus $28,000. What that means is that my earnings, average earnings per year, increases by $5,086 for every year of formal education I have. That's like saying if you graduate from 8th grade, you just earned $5,086 each year for your working life. If you worked 40 years, that's $200,000 for graduating from the 8th grade. You learn another two hundred thousand dollars for graduating from the ninth grade. I tell you what, it pays to go to school. But 
I can do more with it than that. I could I could say that, for instance, if I had nine and a half years of education, how much would I earn? Well, why the amount of, of average earnings equals five thousand and eighty six times the number of years of formal education, in this case nine point five minus twenty eight thousand. When I did the math, I'd find out that with nine and a half years of education, on average, I could expect to earn $20,317 per year. And that would be that point on the graph. I could determine that Y was 20317 either by putting nine and a half into the equation, Y equals 5,086X minus 28,000, or by going up the equation until I got to nine and a half and then finding out what my y value was. And we call that interpolation. We're, we're estimating or predicting a value and it's, it's within our data points. It's an interpolation. That x value is, is not below or above the range of x values that we've actually uh, got in our, in our survey. Well, how about this one? Let's say I wanted to find out how much we could expect to earn if we only had a fifth grade education. I could plug 5 into the equation, do the math, and I conclude that with only a fifth grade education, we'd expect to earn minus $2,570. Minus $2,570. That doesn't sound too accurate. And it probably isn't. It may mean that with a fifth grade education, you may, not, you may have a find, uh, find it very hard to get a job. But it also may mean that beyond our data points, our, our graph is not particularly accurate. And we call that kind of projection an extrapolation. Extrapolation. It's a point that's extra or outside the data points in our data set. You try this one. Hit your pause button, try the problem, and then hit your forward key to move on to my answer. Well, which of these lines do you think is the line of best fit for the data on this graph? The red or the green? Well, if you look at the red line, there's only three points below it and probably eight or nine or ten points above it. And if you look at the green line, it seems like there's about the same number of points above and below the line. I think the green line is a much better representation of the uh, data points that we've we've uh, sh shown on this graph. Now, can we figure out the equation for this line? Well, we can. We can see that our slope is 1. A rise of 1 results in a run of 1. So our slope is 1 over 1, or 1. And B, our y-intercept is 2. So our equation is y equals x plus 2. Now we're supposed to use extrapolation. Extrapolation is making a projection outside the range of our data set. We're going to use extrapolation to predict the value of y for an x value of our choice. Well, I'm going to pick, oh, I'll pick 16 because that's beyond my data set. And I can use this graph to tell me what I think the value for y would be when x is 16. I could do that either by using the graph or by putting 16 in for x in the equation. And in either case, I'm going to get y equals 16 plus 2, or 18. Well, that's our lesson on fitting a line to data points and using a linear model to make projections and predictions. I hope you learned a lot. Now it's time to test your skills. 
go to www.mastermath.info and you'll find worksheets and quizzes there to help make sure you understand this concept. I hope you had a good time. I hope you learned a lot. And I hope we see you again real soon.